Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm looking forward to sharing my lessons learned and experiences. And let's dive into Buyer Journey Reimagined. A little bit about myself. To the left, you will see my key values, what makes me me, what grounds my decisions, what grounds who I am. It's all about inspire, influence, and impact. And when I think about inspire, it's about building the trust and credibility, just as we are today. It's about influence, thinking about extreme ownership, owning the good, the bad, and the ugly. And impact is all about results and relationships. It's very often that we think about results all the time, but for me, relationships are just as key. I love to travel, I love to take photography, and here are some photos capturing some of my moments over the past few months. And if you notice, the ducks are in the water, all the ducks are rowing in the same direction except one in the middle. And I typically think of myself as that one that's going off track, that's going off the unbeaten path, that's challenging the status quo. And so for me, stress, anxiety, mindfulness, essentialism, diversity, belonging are top of mind and are areas that I would like to explore and learn more and be an advocate and a voice for those um, unspoken. And of course, be a smile. That's probably the best thing ever. So let's get to know each other. So if you could share who you are, uh, where you're coming from, with city or state or country for that matter, would love to get to know you. Definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn. So let's talk a little bit about buyer journey. When you think about a buyer journey, there are five steps. Discover, learn, try, buy, and advocate. Now, each of these steps have a role to play. But the role that they play depends on where your buyer is in their journey. So let's dive a little deeper into each of those steps. For discover, if the buyer is looking at information, is trying to understand what problems they're having, discover is the step that they're in. So making sure you are where your customers are, where your buyers are with blogs, social media is a great way to be present in that discovery phase. The second is about learn. Now this is where the buyer has identified their problem. Now they want to learn more about it, find out what, op what is all there. So make sure your web page, you have videos that talk about uh, the, the problem and an introductory webinar talking about what you have to offer. Then comes the try phase. Now this is where the buyer has narrowed down and looked at a couple of options and now they know you are one of those options that they wanna go after. What do we do? Demos are our best friend. Product webinars, go deep into how those problems are being solved. Talk about use cases and solutions to articulate those challenges that they are facing and how your solution can help. Now, if they're in that buy phase, which is where everybody wants to be, then make sure you have good customer reviews. Make sure you have a community presence. Make sure you are where the customers are reading information about you and your competition in the marketplace. And at the end of the day, once they have made the decision to buy, make sure that they are your best advocate going forward. This is just like a sunrise, bringing those steps together and your advocate, making sure you have the customer success story, you have interviews with your customers, they are the champions that you are showcasing, that's the best way to be. These could be conferences, any way you could showcase that experience. So let's dive a little deeper and talk about your favorite story. Now, Think about companies, think about products, think about movies, music, animations, anything and everything that you can think of. And what's your favorite story? What makes you 
pause and be like, hmm, I want to know more. Or it intrigues you and your curiosity is piqued. What is that story? Type it in the chat or love to learn. Now, let's talk about what takes a story to be a good one. Now, in a memorable story, there are three steps, right? You have the start, the middle, and the end. Translate this into the buyer journey. Start, make it worth their time to care. The discover and learn phase. In the middle, gain trust and credibility. Make sure that they are not just looking at you as, oh, you are a potential, but that they have your gained your trust and they have your credibility to say, yes, I want to buy the solution. Perfect. And at the end, it's never done. Find your true storyteller, your advocate, the ones that will go champion for you. I have been fortunate in my career to find customers that love the product, love the service, they love the people that they work with, that they are your best champions. They're out there telling others how awesome you are. And that's the best memorable story that you can have. So break that apart. Try to think about how you narrate this in your own product marketing. We are all B2B product marketers. We all have an opportunity to shape how we want to tell our stories. And the buyer journey is the starting point. Do you understand the buyer? Do you have a good understanding of the buyer persona that you're after? All of these are good questions to ask. Here are two quotes that I try to live by every day. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Says Albert Einstein. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Says Leonardo da Vinci. Great minds are focusing on simplicity. There must be some truth to it. And so I live and breathe this message every day. So let's uncover some of our existing tools out there, whether it's branding, whether it's marketing. Think about those things and let's embark on a journey to reimagine. And we'll start with the website. Today, all of our websites have a purpose. They are the homepage, the front door to any company, any product that you can think of. And these websites have a specific structure. They are articulated in a specific way. You have a homepage, you have product pages, you have solutions, you have resources, all of the stuff that's there. But what if you looked at the website from the buyer perspective? And we challenged how a website is structured, where we focus on the customer needs. So say a buyer has a specific set of pain points. Does your website talk about the product and the company? Because that's what we know how to talk about inside out. Or are we talking about it from the buyer perspective outside in? So focus on the customer needs and measure the right metrics. I know often... Google Analytics and other um, analytic tools out there show you so many metrics that you could be looking at metrics, but make sure you're measuring the right metrics. And if you ask me, hey, what's the right metric? I might not have a good answer today because each unique need that you're solving has a specific metric that you would go after. I do have my favorite uh, product marketing dashboard of metrics. And I would love to share more if anyone's interested to learn more. But think about the website, right? Reimagine the website. Does the website have to have a navigational flow the way we are used to today? Or can we have it with like a treasure hunt where there are different touch points, different viewpoints that you can bring um, in those uh, websites and make it fun, pique people's curiosity, break away from the mold of how websites are structured today. Second is content. How often do you go to a website or research on a content to find that, hey, what we have is not limitations of content. We have information overload. So resonate with the buyer. 
try to map the right message, right? Today, my presentation is telling you a story and telling you about how you can reimagine. And every photo that I picked for every slide is intentional. This specific photo is to show you that you have everybody around you that looks the same, but yet one is very unique. And it's for you to focus and zoom in on that specific one, to adjust the lens, if you will. So look at all the content that you have. Look at the resources that's there on your website. Oftentimes, as companies evolve, you will have resources that are sitting on the website just for SEO purposes, but you do realize that that might be doing more damage than what the SEO is doing for you. So look at the resources. Make sure that you have content that's relevant. Make sure you have content that resonates with the buyer, that's giving the right message. If the company has pivoted from A to B and you're still having content about A, that's confusing for the buyer to not be sure where is this company going or what is the message that the company is trying to articulate. So think about those aspects when you look at um, bringing these together. And do spring cleaning. Prioritize and clean your resources every quarter if you need to, just to make sure that you are relevant and you are right where your buyer is. Email reimagine. Email is probably my favorite challenging problem in life. Nurture, not spam. I'll say that again. Nurture, not spam. Million times I would sign up for a service or a subscription only to find out that the emails that I'm receiving are not the right ones. They're not where I am in the experience and it's forcing me to go through a flow that I'm not ready to take on. So always ask, what would you like to receive in your email inbox? Don't take the inbox for granted. Think of it as a channel. You have different ways to engage with your customer. And email is the most personal one. How do you make sure that when you drop something into my inbox, that you are being mindful, that you're taking the time to provide something that will be relevant and important at that moment in time? If I just signed up, and I get an email five minutes after, maybe I just wanted to sign up. I didn't really want an email coming right in, uh, in my inbox. And that's probably when I will hit that unsubscribe button. So be careful of how you are providing information, where you're providing information, and in what means are you providing information, the channels that you're taking to take that path forward. And Last but not least, webinars. We've all probably had our webinar overload over this past year. How many times have you heard of Zoom? Zoom um, not doing what it's supposed to do. That we have lost touch of how we communicate, how we engage with our audience. And today, what I would encourage is for each of us to think about how we host our webinars. Is it a one-way conversation? Are we interacting with our audience? Are we engaging with them? Are we asking them questions? Are we finding ways to connect with the audience? Because at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's that connection. It's making sure you are providing something of value to the individual that has joined your webinar. Now, Webinars in the past have always been a quantity scheme. It's, hey, how many leads did you get after the webinar? But now, shift that to think about quality. It's about making sure that you are providing the right quality for the content you're providing in the webinar, for the people that are joining the webinar, as well as who you follow up after the webinar and providing that um, seamless experience through this entire Work, through, work process. This is all good stuff. Now, reimagine a webinar. How do you make it more interactive? How do you provide more with less, right? It's not a, let's get through 60 slides of PowerPoint um, in the time that we have. It's how do I connect with you and help you in what you are trying to uncover today? That's what it is. It's about the conversation. 
And so ask this question, what's the right time and right place in the buyer journey? How do we build that momentum through this process? And is there a way to provide an engaging experience without impacting what the user is looking for? Ask again, what's the right time and right place in the buyer journey? And what do you provide at what perspective? So you can't go back and change the beginning, right? But you can start where you are and change the ending. And this is a beautiful quote by C.S. Lewis that gives you a, a point in time to say, hey, doesn't matter what has happened in the past. Let's start now and look towards the future because we can change the future. We can change how we engage with our audiences. And this is a great opportunity for all of us to think through those experiences together. Now, if you are looking at building those momentums, thinking of, hey, we just talked about different examples, extrapolate that a little bit more from a webinar. Think about Slack messages. How often do you send a Slack message and then expect the person on the other end to respond right away? Is that a mindful behavior? Is that something that you want to build? The way you interact with your audience. Think about examples where you have operated in a specific way and you want to challenge that status quo, right? Remember the depth that's going in the opposite direction. Find those unbeaten paths because they're all out there. It's for us to go discover, go explore, and even find ways that we didn't even know existed. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been a privilege connecting with all of you. And if you have any questions, feel free to add them into the chat and I'm here to respond to them. Have a great day. And I've also included some resources that you could leverage as part of your experience reimagined, whether it's the buyer journey, whether it's art of storytelling, messaging and positioning, and so on and so forth. Thank you and have a wonderful day.